Okay, so now we're going to talk about machine to user authentication. Usually the focus is on user to machine authentication, but um, machine to user authentication is actually a very, very important aspect and it's a very difficult problem to solve as well. So we're going to first outline what is the problem and then we're going to see how uh, one can approach this problem. Uh, there are no really good solutions, uh, no general, uh, general purpose uh, solutions uh, to apply. So the question is, uh, how can a user tell something legitimate from something illegitimate? That is the, the essence of the problem here. So for instance, uh, how can a user tell that the payment terminal in the supermarket is a legitim legitimate one or an illegitimate one that is trying to uh, skim his or her credit card and uh, try to steal the money. Another example is uh, how to tell whether an email is coming from a legitimate source or not, or if it's uh, totally bogus. And finally, uh, the same thing about a web page. Or we can use a login screen or something like that. That's the essence of the problem. So spoofing or masquerading, uh, that's when an attacker is masquerading as authorized when he's actually not. So uh, this can be applied to a system, in which case the attacker impersonates an authorized user, or to a user, in which case the attacker impersonates a legitimate system user interface or part of a user interface. Now, phishing, that's a special case of masquerading attack, uh, trying to collect sensitive data. So for instance, uh, a login screen, which is actually not the real login screen and so on. Uh, another example is an email from the IT department requesting the password. Uh, so that is classic phishing. Now, uh, you can see this, uh, check this web page out on this URL. It's a phishing quiz uh, made by Google. So it's, uh, it shows a few examples of uh, phishing. Now, take a few moments and think about how on earth can we prevent spoofed interfaces? Uh, so how can you be sure that the payment terminal in the supermarket is actually uh, the right one and it's not a fraudulent one that is trying to, to steal all your money? And uh, how can you determine that the login web page of Facebook or, or Google or whatever you want to log into is actually the right one and not something run by fishers? Now try, try to think about the general principles. I mean, how, how do you actually determine whether any of these examples are uh, legitimate or not? Now, in general, uh, the general solution, if one could call it that, is that we must have some trusted interface. So for instance, uh, when we are surfing the web, the computer and the web browser are trusted, whereas the web pages are not. And in this case, the browser tries to aid us into uh, avoiding uh, fraudulent web pages. So they, they try, try various usability-based approaches, so showing the, uh, some stuff in green if it has a signed certificate and so on. It uh, emphasizes the domain name so that you can see that it's, uh, whether it's facebook.com or facebook.com.maliciouswebsites.net or something like that. Uh, so there are various uh, ways the browser tries to aid. And the web pages in this case, they cannot affect the interface of the web browser at least in most cases, there has been some bugs where, where that was possible. But in general, uh, it's not possible. 
so you have this, this aid. Another example is that, yeah, the computer browser and web pages are untrusted. So for instance, you're uh, using someone else's computer, but then maybe you have a mobile phone with bank ID, which is trusted, so you can see that you're actually signing into to the right web page. Uh, and you're actually signing the, the correct transactions when you're talking to the bank. So even if you don't trust the bank website, uh, when you log in, since you're using bank ID, the crooks, they, they can only log in with you this one time and not uh, other times because they need your bank ID. And when you make transactions and transfer money, you need to approve this transaction, so authorize it using your bank ID again, and then usually the bank shows you that, okay, you want to transfer this amount to this account, is that correct? Uh, then sign this and we will do it. So in that case, you don't have to trust uh, the, the bank, you don't have to trust the browser, and you don't have to trust the computer, uh, because you won't get any fraudulent transactions. Uh, you might leak your, your transaction history and things like that, stuff that they can read, uh, but at least you won't lose any money over it. Uh, another example is that uh, payment terminal is untrusted, the payment card is trusted, uh, so your own payment card. So how do you communicate with a payment card? Well, you do it through the untrusted terminal. Uh, so in that case, uh, when you're standing there and you, you need to pay something and you see it costs 25 kroner or two euros or something uh, in, the, in the terminal display, yeah, what is sent to, to your card might be like 2,500 kroner or 2,500 euros or whatnot. And uh, you just have to enter your PIN code and that's sent to the to the card and the card won't know the difference and you won't know the difference uh, until much later when you log into your bank. So in this case, uh, the trusted interface is kind of uh, core. Uh, well, in all, all of these examples, you need some type of trusted interface that you can interact with. Uh, for instance, uh, Windows, when you're, you're uh, logging into a public, publicly available Windows computer, like in the uh, university lab, then Windows has this so-called trusted path, and uh, you're supposed to press Control Alt Delete uh, to bring up the authentication dialog when you want to log in. So this would prevent uh, prevent you from uh, falling into the trap that someone else has left the computer logged in and they are simply running a program which looks like the login prompt and you enter your username and password and voila, they have your username and password. Uh, and uh, But if you press Control alt delete uh, Windows, Windows will react to this and uh, you will, you're supposed to see whether this is the case or not. But then the question is, how many do know that? Uh, so far, I haven't met a single person that actually knows this unless they are very well trained in security, in which case it's sort of uh, useless knowledge anyway. So because then they, are, then they know how to, to spot things and, and when to be alert and not. So in summary, uh, users must have trusted devices uh, or trust some part of their devices at least. And uh, more importantly, the users must not make mistakes setting these up. So for instance, uh, when you have your, when you get your new brand new smartphone and unpack it from the box, yeah, we assume that it's, uh, clean and has no uh, malicious stuff on it, so it's trustworthy. Although it has happened that uh, new technology has been delivered with malware on it, but uh, let's assume that uh, the phone is clean and trustworthy. 
and then the user starts installing a bunch of apps. And uh, in this case, it's important that the user installs the right apps and not install any malware, because once they install some malware, they are sort of screwed. Uh, sure, there is security in the phone trying to separate apps, so if you install malware, it can't uh, mess with the, the other legitimate apps and so on, but uh, these systems aren't perfect. So, in this case, yeah, we need to do really great usability to aid users to not make these mistakes. So, for instance, in the case of the brand new smartphone, yeah, you say that it's an Android device, then Google must put a lot of effort into the uh, Google Play Store and the same for, for uh, Apple's App Store uh, to let the to to because that is the user interface that the user can trust so that interface must allow the the user to uh, separate legitimate from illegitimate apps uh, which are presented in the interface now both google and apple has some uh, app reviewing process which uh, removes a lot of uh, malware that's uh, attempted to push up to the store but and uh, they miss a lot. So it's every now and then uh, in the news, so like every few weeks, that there are quite a few uh, malware containing apps that uh, either of these have had to remove uh, because they have missed them in, in their reviewing process and then they've been detected later. So this is a very hard problem to solve. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, all we can do is try to improve the usability to, to aid users. And uh, those solutions depend very much on the, the context we are in. So that was everything for this session. Uh, thanks.